Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 tips and tricks video. In this video, we're gonna talk about a Farming Sim server. What do you need to run a Farm Sim server? Why would you wanna run a Farm Sim server? And how do you configure it? By the time we're done with this video, you should be well equipped to do this exact same setup at your home. So let's break this down. Why might you want to run a Farm Sim server at your house? Well, the main one is going to be, ultimately, it's cheaper this way than renting a dedicated server from a server host for long term. Now, I say this while at the same time, I am a partner with a dedicated server host. The reason I say this is because if you plan on running a dedicated server for, let's say, a year, two years, or definitely the entire lifespan of FarmSim25, you're going to save a lot of money in running your own dedicated server. If you're going to be off and on, hot and cold, you're going to do multiplayer this month, you're going to do multiplayer in another six, seven months, maybe you only jump into multiplayer after every big update, then you're going to be more apt to want to rent a dedicated server because that's going to be cheaper in the end because you're not paying those monthly fees month after month after month after month. What are you going to need? for a dedicated server. Well, you're gonna need your own copy of FarmSim 25 for the server to run. So you're gonna need at least two copies of the game. Now, I know that there are some titles out there that you let you run a free server off of your purchased game license, but that's not how FarmSim 25 works. You're gonna need your own separate license. Typically, Folks will play off of Steam, for example, but they'll need to buy a server license from Giants using the Giants eShop. Or maybe you play off of Epic. Again, I would suggest the Giants eShop copy to run as a server. Now, if you have the Giants eShop copy and that's what you're using to play the game with, you can go get a second copy from Giants because ultimately using their installer is gonna be the best route and the best experience for a dedicated server. For example, Epic offered Farming Simulator 22 for free several months back. I did a video on how to make a dedicated server using the Epic copy, and boy, there are a ton of loopholes you gotta jump through in order to get it all to work because you gotta deal with the Epic launcher. That's not necessarily the case with the eShop copy of the game. Now, it would do me solid if you go and decide that you do want to run a dedicated server after watching this video to use my affiliate link down in the description. Once you download the game from Giants and once you install it using the activation code, you're going to want to launch the game for the very first time. It's going to ask you to enter an activation code. You're going to activate the game. And then when you get to the main menu, you're going to just want to close it. That's going to be one of the only times you're ever going to actually launch the game from the server. Another opportunity might be to periodically launch the game if you know that there's been an update or to update a DLC if you have DLCs installed on the server. Just like you need two copies of the game, you're going to need two copies of the DLCs also, again, if you're going to be running the server. Once you launch the game, well, there's a few other things you need to do. One, I highly recommend that the system that you run the server on is running Windows 11. Windows 10 will be fine until around October of 2025. At that point, Microsoft is going to discontinue offering security updates. And in good conscience, I can't recommend to you that you run Windows that's not getting active security updates. Two, I strongly suggest that you set up the system to auto log in to a local account. Now I know Microsoft has caused a little bit of issues in being able to do that, with requiring a Microsoft account to install Windows. But there are a few ways of going about that. And if you do some searching on the internet, you should find a couple articles on basically how to do just that. But we want a local account or, or at worst, a Microsoft account to auto log in when the system boots. That way it turns on and comes directly to the desktop like we see here. And the reason for that is, is in the event of a power outage, or if we're restarting it for a Windows update, or if we just shut the server down for a period of time and then want to turn it back on, we want it to come back into Windows 
because we're going to be setting up the dedicated server software to auto start on login. Once we have that all set up, well, we're ready to actually configure the server. And configuring the server is fairly straightforward. So if you navigate to where you have installed Farming Simulator, so for me, that's going to be to the D drive, and it's going to be Farming Simulator 2025. From here, you're going to find a dedicated server PDF, and that's what we have right here. This is some basic documentation on running a dedicated server. Basically what it's going to tell you here is one, you need to install the game, download and install the latest updates, launch the game, activate it when it's prompting you. And then that's the point where we are at currently. Now we're going to need to configure the dedicated server XML. It does say that this is optional, but for me, I would suggest doing this. So we're going to open this up. And from here, well, we're going to look at this web server port 8080. I'm a little bit of a geek, so I like to change it to 8088, just for fun. We have our admin username, and then we have a blank for a password. We're gonna to wanna to put an admin password. This is gonna to be to log into the web interface for the dedicated server. For this video, I'm just gonna type in FS25. Type in whatever you want there. From here, we're gonna pay, say TLS port. This is gonna be for SSL. We're gonna change this to false. If we want to change the name of the server, we can change the name here. And we're gonna come down here to imprint. And I'm actually just gonna delete out all of that because we don't need the little logos that are gonna be there. I'm gonna delete this little logo section. We're also gonna delete that. And I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna hit file, I'm gonna hit save. Once we do that, we're gonna close it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to make a shortcut to launch dedicated server.exe. So I've already got the shortcut here. I created it, but basically you can go here, right click, and you say, create shortcut. And there you go, right? And we're gonna to wanna to put this shortcut in the startup folder. So we're gonna to go to C colon slash program data. Then we're going to come down to Microsoft. We're going to find Windows. And we're going to find Start Menu, Programs, Startup. And we're going to drag our dedicated service shortcut into that folder. So anything in this folder will auto start when the game launches or when the system boots. That's what I mean to say. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to double click on this shortcut just to run it. Now, if it's the first time that you have run this software, you're gonna get a prompt here. Do you wanna allow public and private network access to this app? Basically, it's asking you, do you wanna allow this application to basically transmit data across your network? Well, of course I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't be trying to run a dedicated server now, would I? So we're going to hit allow. And now we have our dedicated server running. We have this URL. So this URL is going to be our IP address, colon, and then our port, in our case, 8088. So let's launch a web browser. Again, we're still on the local system. And we'll go to that address. And if we're lucky, well, we have our server website. We're gonna go in, hit admin, and then FS25. And we've logged into our dedicated server. So this is very, very good news to see. Going forward, we're just going to set this up. Dedicated server, and we'll just say test. And we're going to give this a administrator password, admin. We're going to give it a game password of testing. 
and everything else we're just going to hit save on for now and what we're going to do is we are going to hit start now what this is going to do is it is going to launch the game in text mode so it is launching farming simulator 25 and it is booting Riverbend Springs up. Now, while that's running for a little bit, let's explain some of this web interface. So we have our CPU utilization, we have a RAM utilization, our hard disk utilization, our uptime, and the number of players. Now, typically you can run up to 16 players on a dedicated server. Right now, this is set to 12. That's easily changed. We have the game version, Farming Simulator 25, version 1.2.1.0. Depending on what version it is, you may have issues with your client connecting if your client and the server are different versions. They need to be the same. So if you can't connect because your client's updated, that's a hint that you need to come here and run the game from your server in order to get it updated. We have the server name. We have the administrator password once you're in the server. We have the password to join the server. And we have our save game slot. We have 20 slots on our server, just like we do on PC for our client. The map we're running, how much money we'll start out with, our loan amount, etc. We've got our max slots, our game language, autosave interval. If the game is empty, it will automatically pause. We can change this. And if cross plays allowed, that means consoles can join us. We have no current active mods and we could activate the Mac Dom pack if we want. If we activate DLC, everyone must have not only the DLC, but also must have the proper version of the DLC that's active on the server. From our save games, we have a listing of all of our save game slots. And if we had active saves in here, they would be listed. We can also upload a save game by coming to here. What we need to do is have a zip of the save game folder, and then we can navigate. We can upload that zip to a specific save slot. So if we have set up a save on our local system and it's ready to go, we want to put that on the server. We zip up the entirety of the save game folder. Let's say save game two. We go to save game two, we go inside of that folder. Then we select all, we save it. Then we upload that save game to dot zip here, and then we're ready to go. This is gonna be where we manage our mods. We can upload mods, we can activate mods, deactivate mods. And then we have a listing of our log files. So this is simply that over here. Under settings, we can turn on public mod download. Now, since this is running on our home network, this isn't necessarily going to be the best because what this does is if I activate it, it basically says that anyone can go to this URL and download the mods that are being used on the server. Well, the problem is pretty much everyone's home internet is using NAT. And as such, you have a private internal internet address compared to your public external internet address. If you type that into your web browser right now, you're definitely not gonna hit my server. You're probably gonna hit nothing because nothing on your network has that address. So you need to activate something called port forwarding on your router. Then you have to share your home internet IP address to your friends with then this information on how to then forward port 8088 from your home internet IP address to your internal server IP address. And that's just a whole new can of worms that is way beyond the scope of this particular video. So for this video, I suggest that you leave that as non-activated. You could come here and auto activate server restarts and basically say sometime between two and 5 PM when the server is empty, just restart it for me. So every day, the game will just restart and be ready to go fresh. So now that we've got this game booted up, let's fire up Farm Sim 25 and see if we can't connect to it. 
So here I am running on my local client. We're going to go to multiplayer. We're going to join a game. And it's going to go out and connect to the Giants server, multiplayer servers. And lo and behold, looky here. Here's our daddy server test. It has 12 clients. And we have this icon of a house, meaning that it is running a private dedicated server versus a globe, which means it's a public dedicated server. So we have a lock, which means that it is locked behind a password. So we can basically say, yeah, I want to connect to that. Start, it's going to say enter the password. Password was what, test? Apparently the password wasn't test. Well, at least now you know what happens when you put the wrong password in. The password was test ing. Okay, so let's do I I in the G here. Let's just type it back in again. And we're gonna start. So now it is connecting me to my dedicated server. And then it's gonna be loading in the save game local. And once it's done that, I'll join into the server and we'll be we'll be connected and ready to go. So while this is loading up, let's just quickly jump over to our server and see what it looks like from that end. So on this end, you can see this message, I have connected to the game. And if we basically refresh our web interface, you're gonna see I'm connected here, playing time is zero minutes, I'm not an admin, that's good. And on the client side, now that I've fully loaded in, right, I can set myself up. Well, I'm in here and I'm on the server. How do I know I'm on the server and not just running locally in single player? Well, first thing, it may be hard to see down on the mini map, but the mini map has a time on it in milliseconds. Okay, so right now we are at. Well, let me try to get it to one that works. So right now we're, we're hovering around 15 to 18, 20 milliseconds. That's the lag, if you will, between my connection and the server. 20 milliseconds, pretty dang good. Now, I am still sending my connection all the way out to the internet and all the way back to my system that's running the server, back out to the internet, back out to me. So it's, it's a pretty long round trip but still 20 milliseconds is a very good response time. The other way I know I'm on a server is if I hit escape, well, I'm taken directly into this multiplayer menu where I can, well, I have to become an admin and then after I become an admin, I can create a server or a farm. That's not for this video, that's for a different video, but that's how we know we're connected. There honestly isn't anything really special about our dedicated server install of Farm Sim 25. This is, at its heart, just an install of Farm Sim 25. So if we go to Documents, My Games, Farming Simulator 2025, this is going to be the exact same folder and file setup as you have on your own system. And as such, the mods folder is going to be the mods folder for the server. So any mods put into here will show up here under your mods listing and will ultimately show up here at the bottom as mods that could be activated. So as I mentioned, you could come here and you could right click on this and you could go to properties. You come here to sharing and you could say, I want to share this, right? And you could share this out with an account and then you could connect to this share from another system on your home network to then put mods on here super quick. So that's one thing you could do that's kind of advantageous. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. When you're all said and done, if you want to shut the server down for some reason, you can RDP into it. Of course, you can shut the system down itself, or if you just have this screen collected, selected, Control C, and that will basically stop 
the server. The server is no longer running. If we refresh this web page, it's nothing's going to come up because it's down. Now, a few things to note as far as troubleshooting goes. Okay. If for some reason you're having trouble connecting to the web interface, it's quite possible you need to come in here and manually open up something on your firewall. Remember when we were prompted, do we want to allow this connection? And we hit yes. Maybe this didn't pop up for some reason, or maybe you accidentally hit no instead. We're going to come here to a start menu. We're going to go to firewall. And we're going to run the advanced firewall. And we're going to come to inbound rules. And we want to look for something related to Farming Simulator 25. And see if there anything's listed here. If nothing's listed here, then we're going to want to add our own inbound rule. So to do that, we're going to come up here to New Rule. We're going to say for a program. Next, we're going to browse to where Farming Simulator 25 is installed. For me, I put it on the D drive. We're going to select the application and we're going to say that. Then we're going to come down here, allow this connection, allow it across all the domains. And then we're going to say, we're going to give it a name and we're going to finish it out. Okay, I'm not going to do that because it's already listed here. If you happen to get a message that says failed to assign process to job object, unable to assign game server process to process group when trying to start the web interface, well, then it's possible that you need to run dedicated server with admin privileges that the local account doesn't have enough privileges to launch the server. If you are not able to connect to the server because you get a message that there's something already running on a given port. Well, that means that something else is using that port. And again, you're going to want to come into your dedicated server XML and you want to modify that port from 8080, the default. Remember, we set this to 8088 to something else. They suggest 8090 as an example. Once you save that out and then launch the dedicated server application again, then it should run. If you're having issues with respect to just general latency and lagginess, the first thing I would say is how many people are connected to your server? If you've got a fair number of people connected to your server, what's your internet connection look like? Do you have a good upload and a good download speed? Are you limited with your upload speed? And how close are you to that total upload speed? Everyone that's connected to the server will ultimately require a little bit of data to be transferred to and from the server to keep not only their location updated for everyone else, but to also update everyone else's connection information to them. In addition, if you're doing field work or other things, the game is busy updating all of the other layers of the map and sending those updates out to all the clients all the time. So there can be a fair bit of traffic to and from the server to all of the connections. And as such, if you do start getting a bit of lagginess, pay attention to see if maybe it starts happening after you get a certain number of people connecting or if it's happening because you're doing a certain type of thing on the network. So to wrap it up, you really don't need a high-end system to run a dedicated server at your house. Like I said, this is running off of a little small mini computer. It's running a Ryzen mobile chip from a few generations ago, 5500G. So it's very, very low power, which makes it ideal for something like this because it can literally sit in the corner of your desk for all maybe 20, 30 watts at most. And it's never going to really be noticed on your power bill. It's not going to be generating a bunch of heat anywhere. Plus, it's going to be pretty darn quiet. You can see here we're running. The Giants engine, just over a gig of memory. I mentioned that this was set up with 16 gigs of memory. We've got eight core 16 thread processor here. 
it's just barely doing anything. What you really need though is a decent and steady internet connection. I don't have any clients connected right now, so we're really not drawing any bandwidth. But as you get more and more connections to people, you're gonna need more and more bandwidth. It's not gonna be a whole lot, but it is gonna be a little bit of bandwidth and you're gonna need a good steady bandwidth because the server is gonna to have to constantly send out updates to the clients. Clients are gonna be sending information back to the server, which is then compiling all that and sending that out to all the clients. So everybody can keep track of where everyone else is, what field states are in, what ground states, foliage states, texture states, the ground deformation, all of that stuff has to be tracked and distributed between all the different clients. You don't really need any GPU whatsoever because it's running the game in text mode here on the server. I hope this is gonna help you all set this up and run it. Uh, it's been a fairly successful video for FS22 and FS19, so I try to re-update this every time a new version comes out. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Is this something that you're gonna do on your own network at home? And until next time, happy farming.